Welcome to Back Cover, the podcast that explores the classic soul music of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. I'm Karen Williams. Join me and my co-host Steve Williams, and no, we're not related, as we flip over the album covers and share stories of the movers and shakers that created, wrote, and produced those classic soul sounds. We'll educate and entertain you, all while keeping the music alive. Welcome to episode number nine. In this episode, we're talking a lot of music, from Prince to rock and roll, from R&B to gospel. So join us. We'll give you some laughs too. I'm gonna post the uh, picture of the Prince outfit too that I took. Uh-huh. The picture of the. And you estimated that his shoe, his shoe size had to be what? About an eight for women. Is that big? No. no. Oh. Is it smaller than my foot? His foot is actually was actually smaller than my foot. Well, he was a dwarf anyway. He's a little big guy. He's a tiny little guy. Yeah. <clears throat> they had a. Uh, uh, they have videos running, of course, and they showed him on the stage playing with Eric Clapton, and I forgot who the other person was. They adored him. He got up on stage and he he was. They were all playing this this song. I can't even remember the song they were playing. And he wailed it out in the end. And then when he got done, he took off his guitar and he tossed it to his assistant in the audience and just pimped on off. That's right. Now y'all get some of that. Right. And left them. <laughs> they were still on stage. He was like. <laughs> yeah. He had that definite Prince attitude and just walked on off. Get some of that. Right. I was like, ah, you, 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 you do it, little man. That reminds me of a story. Of a story? Yeah, back in the rock and roll era. I read about it. Okay. Uh, Jerry Lee Lewis and Chuck Berry. They used to have a little riff, and the, the guy, Alan Freed, was the DJ up in Cleveland. He's uh, right. credited for giving the first rock and roll concert. Yeah. And he was supposedly, you know, so-called uh, first rock and roll the DJ. The king of rock and roll DJs. Uh-huh. Yep. Because he started concerts and things of that nature. Right. Well, the thing was, they used to battle who was going to open the show or who was going to close the show. And Chuck Berry was the king then, so to speak. Okay. Because of the guitar and all this other things, the things he could do with the guitar. Right, the little duck walking. Oh, duck walking, and he, yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. So legend has it that Jerry Lee Lewis came in last. And right before Chuck Berry went on, Jerry Lee Lewis opened up, man, with uh, uh, great balls of fire. And he beat that piano almost to death. I mean, he got all up on it, bling, bling, bling. And at the end, he pulled out a can of lighter fluid and poured inside the piano, threw a match on it, lit it on fire. Oh, wow. (laughs) Chuck was waiting in the wings. (laughs) And Jerry Lee walked right by him and said, Nah, get you some of that, killer. <laughs> <laughs> they had to put the fire out before they could start. I know. Before Chuck could close the show. So I know what Prince was talking about. All them legendary guitar players. You say who? Eric Clapton. It was Eric Clapton. I can't remember Pete who the Townsend other one. Townsend. Probably the it was uh-huh. him. All of them. They uh-huh. were up on stage. Yeah. And they were jamming this one Jam. song. Prince got up last with him. Last. Somebody pushed him up on stage. Because he probably didn't want to go. He was very shy. Yeah. He got up there. And just wore it out. And just wore it out. I mean, he wore it out. And when they (laughs) finished, he took his guitar off. He tossed it to his assistant. I'm done. Pimped, pimped off. on off. He did the breakdown. Pimped. Now, get you some of that. Right. And he just <laughs> walked on off. I was like, dang, Prince. James Brown did the same thing. See, it, it, talking to all of those performers when I worked at the record company and, and, and having all those people that I talked with at various conventions, JB is 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 documented it was called the tammy show <clears throat> okay and it was produced 
Uh, it was a, it, I think it was a TV show, but it was a concert like. James Brown, of course, the Rolling Stones, and a few other rock groups. Well, James was still kind of new, but he had he was still with the Famous Flames. So instead of them saying James Brown, mm-hmm. they they said the Famous Flames. James got out there, man, and did please, 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 and a whole lot of other stuff. He was dancing all over the floor on one foot and uh, <laughs> try me and not on mine. And, and and he stayed out there almost an hour and a half. Oof. And by the time he got through, everybody was sweating. Women, he did night train for like 20 minutes. <laughs> and they were screaming and hollering. And guess who was supposed to come on after him? Who? The Rolling Stones. Oh, yeah. It took them an hour to get on, to get the people quiet, because they were still screaming, famous Spain, famous Spain. This brother tore it up. So you have to be careful who you come behind, because Otis Reddy, although they were label mates, Otis Reddy did not like performing after Sam and Dave, because when Sam and Dave got off the, they had to literally mop the flo- the stage. Because it was sweat everywhere. Everywhere. I can believe that. Everywhere. He did not like coming on after them. And especially in England. Oh, man. See, that's why I, I collect a lot of those old mm-hmm. clippings. Right. Yes, indeed. Team. Those performers are still real popular over in England. They will that's never die said. in England. Did you hear say it? She said that. She said she performed with, who was it? Edwin Starr? Edwin Starr. Edwin Starr, man. One doggone song. <laughs> he was still singing. War! <laughs> what is it good for? Terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> The man can sing anything. That's true. I liked Johnny Taylor. Oh, my God. He's one of my favorite R&B. Is that right? Mm-hmm. You ought to hear him sing gospel. I have plethora. I bet you. I, I imagine he could really oh, do that well. Oh, man. I have him in my collection with the uh, Highway QCs. Mm-hmm. Him and his uh, brother, uh, Spencer. And I have him with the Soulsters. Okay. He could. He could... If there was anybody that could sound exactly like Sam, him and Bobby Womack used to, if you wanted to hear both of them perform, put them on the same show. Oh, they tried to outperform each other? Yeah, because they were both protégés right. of Sam. Mm-hmm. And they all talked alike. Think about it. You ever hear me play, well, when we play the we'll, Back we'll to Life? life right, yeah. with Bobby Womack. Say, hey, man, you know, uh-huh. So, you know, so many times you say that. That's a, that's a generational. It is. Guys it in is. the 70s, 60s, 70s, they all kind of talk like that. And and if you ever heard Lou Rawls sing or mm-hmm. talk, sound exactly the same. All those guys off 35th Street. How the both you doing today? Uh, we're fine. How are you, sir? Okay, the plan. I want to ask. Uh, I want to ask y'all something. I was since he listened to my, my son. He listened to all types of music, right? Uh huh. Uh-huh. Africa, country, whatever. Beethoven. He listened to music. He told me something I didn't know. He said Clarence Carter made a recorded a song called "I Smell a Red." Yeah. He did. I thought he was. I thought he was just. I thought he was just playing, but he was serious. Yeah. Uh, I don't have it on this computer, but yeah, I smell a red. Dinah, a great big red. Yeah, that's Dinah. it. Uh huh. <laughs> a low down dirty. Oh, red. Dirty yeah. red. Yeah, he made that on Atlantic Records. Uh, I want to say it had to be either the late sixties or the early seventies, and he recorded it at Muscle Show Sound down in Alabama. That goes to show the boss son no more about music than I do. <laughs> How well, old is your son? Fourteen years old. Oh, you got oh. a problem. <laughs> Yeah, you, he, you, he you said need to catch up. All kind of music. He said because to him there is no um, there is no color about music to him. He, he is so right. 
He is so right. I was. I didn't warning. think. I, I said I never heard that song. I smell the red. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering where he got it from. Uh, wait, man. Like I said, he listens a lot of music. <laughs> he listens a lot of music. Well, with but the, then my grand was like I said, my my uh, my my uh, parents they listen to a lot of old soul music. You know. Oh, he's with them a lot. He with them a lot. There yeah. you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's and you you, yeah. you know how usually we were exposed to that music back in the day. There were two ways. Your parents bought the music and played it at home, or when they went, when they traveled south and you were in the car with them, you had right. to listen to what they listened to. Okay, because I know, because I know in the days, you know, in the day my parents they they had the the uh, the LP things like the big one, the small one, the thirty threes and seventy five, seventy five, oh seventy eight, oh seventy eight. Yeah, they 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 had that. And he 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 listened to a lot of stuff that they listened to because that's what they did. You know, they. They, yeah, and yeah. Like a, uh, the older, uh, what's the song? My mother just love. Uh, 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 it was called. Uh, what artist? Maybe I can help you. Oh, it was, it was, it was like it was a lady. It's like uh, it a lady saying it. <laughs> no, no, I tell you, it's a man. I'm about to uh, respect me, something like that. I don't can I can't remember who it respect. was. Respect, so. not Aretha's respect. No, it was a. It was a. Uh, it could have been Otis Redding's respect. It was a guy. Yeah, she loved Otis Redding. It might have been him. It had to be because he, he, he wrote it, he produced it, he arranged it. That's his yeah. song. Yeah, she she loved Because, see, they saw a lot of rum dingle parties and chickens parties. <laughs> and you know what? People, a, a lot of folks knew Otis Redding's song, but it wasn't really a big hit at all until Aretha put her, her stank on it. That's when it went through the roof. Oh, so she actually just composed and changed it totally? Well, here's what happened, if I may. Okay. O Otis Reddy recorded the song uh, in his early career, and it went. It was a very upbeat song with uh, the barcades in the back and the Memphis horn. And it was like a, what you want? Maybe I got like that. Aretha took it and made it a female anthem but she slowed it down a little bit the, well she didn't slow it down the swampers this was this all white band from uh from muscle shows alabama that had never ever played any so-called at the time r&b music they was just they were just a bad band so in the studios they just sat there and put stuff together so Aretha took the song and made it a female anthem. What you want? And her, so, her, so there you, you go. So you saying that a lot of a lot of a lot of talent from the black musicians, the white folks copied it then. No, let, no. Here's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is when it comes to music, when it comes to music, okay. No matter what genre it might be, there is no color barrier. Okay. Uh, for instance, the Funk Brothers of Motown, the band, the house band, they had five white guys, and they were funky. But see, when it comes to music, we don't have a color barrier. Okay. You shouldn't have one because all music has something to offer. Everybody. And, and what's happened is, sometimes you can take the same song, give it to another artist. You, I want you to Google... <laughs> The, the um, Saturday Night Fever guys. BGs. BGs. BGs uh, had a version of How Do You Mend a Broken Heart. And Chris Christopherson had a version called For the Good Times. Okay. Okay. Now keep okay. your keep your mind right there for a minute. Okay, I I got you. I take, got. You. Take Al Green, a so-called gospelish soul singer. He put his funk on it. Those songs went through the roof because Al's version sold more and was more recognizable to us than it was to Caucasian brothers and sisters. Not, uh -oh, that, uh -oh. not that they didn't like it, but it had a different flavor. It's kind of like the difference between collard greens and kale. Same family, yeah, yeah, different like taste. <laughs> hey, well, okay, now, the son of Kiss and Let's Say Goodbye, who was that, you know? Oh, you're talking about, about the Manhattan. Man, yeah, the Manhattan. Let's just kiss, kiss and, and say, say goodbye. goodbye, yeah. Oh, oh, okay, okay. 
So what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, the point I'm saying is that we are African American race has developed a lot of music, right? Yeah, and we heard, and we've changed a lot of music. I heard uh, uh, a critic on NPR say that without the African American influence. There would be no real music in America. That's what he said. He was a white I, I guy. I believe that. He I was a white that. guy, and I was like, "Whoa, that's pretty have strong." You ever, have you ever heard of uh, the group Lakeside? Yes, yes. You ever heard of a group called the Beatles? Yes. <laughs> Paul McCartney wrote a song called uh, uh, the, 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 "Tell You Something." Da, right, da, I want to hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. All right, go leave that late sixties. Come on up to around 78, 79, Lakeside. Okay. Guy by the name of Otis Stokes was one of the members. They re recorded I Want to Hold Your Hand. Brother, it don't sound nothing like Paul's version. They, they put some souls to it and made it a ballad. And, brother, we were slow dancing like 41 and going north. I mean, we were <laughs> slow. It's all about the interpretation. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so, cause you know what? Cause I know a lot of times, as I was growing up, I used to hear, um, singers, and I thought they was actually Afro Americans, but they wasn't. Right. right. The kink, uh, was it, uh, The Kinks? No, it was, uh, what was the name of the song? I can't remember the song. I can't get up. the, I can't remember. But I just, I used to hear one sing, I'm like, is that, I said, is that a, is that a white man singing that song? Could, could have been. Bee Gees would play more on R&B than I, w- I would like to say than CHR. I, I could be wrong, but I, hey, man, it's a lot of things that are played, the crossover. See, once you cross the barrier of the music, the genres, that's when your real money kicks in. There you go. Those were my announcements. Those are the church announcements. <laughs> Literally, church announcements. <laughs> and now we'll have a song. An A and B selection. selection. <laughs> <laughs> if you from can, the gospel choir, oh, which is always the old people. Have you noticed that? That would be yeah, the adult choir. Yeah, the older adult gospel choir. And then there was the inspirational choir. And, of course, the children's choir. The children's choir. Why did you need so many choirs? And then, uh, every now and then, the combined choir, oh, the which combined are the same choir, people. people. But they just all together. The combined choirs usually sing on the first Sunday. And then you had a gospel choir sing. Second Sunday's children's choir. And then every now and then. The men's choir. Yeah, the, the, those tone-deaf men chorus. <laughs> Everybody's singing in unison. <laughs> not one soprano. <laughs> not one alto. All bass. Well, they don't have soprano and alto and men. They what? have baritone. They have tenor, baritone, bass. All flat. <laughs> I've yet to hear a good male chorus. <laughs> yet, and they always sing something they know good and well they can't sing, but they try. And it's usually the deacon board. <laughs> you know when you can't sing in church because there's gonna be some old mother on the motherboard. Lord bless the heart. <laughs> Let Jesus use you, baby. And you be sitting there like, ain't no, ain't that much use in the world. And you just can't sing. You can't sing. And it's usually some woman who thinks she can just go. I had an aunt like that. She thought she could sing. <laughs> Couldn't sing herself out of jail. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, and she always got up in front of it. I'm a little horse. But I'm all that God use me. And I'm sitting there like. Did she have that one song that she always sang? Yep. Because you know they always do. Tennis. You remember the song, Pray On My Child? No. Oh, see, I forgot you a Methodist person. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of this week's podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you next week.